Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Today's video is called How to Get Ready for a New Puppy, What to Do Before Bringing Your Puppy Home. Now, we're going to go over a lot of things in today's video, and some are things that you're probably expecting, what kind of supplies you need, puppy proofing the house, those sorts of things. We're going to talk about that stuff, but we're also going to talk about several other things that you probably haven't thought of. So I think that you're going to find this time watching this video today a good investment. It probably is going to be on the longer side because we've got a lot to cover. But again, I think that you're going to be glad that you did. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. If you have been here before, you know that I have this website called PeopleLovingAnimals.com. I've been doing this as my full-time job since 2015, and we are a website devoted to the help, support, care, and training of dogs and cats. There are hundreds of blog posts uh, on the website all about dogs and cats. Uh, we have an email subscriber list, and obviously we have a YouTube channel, which you're on right now. So I invite you to go ahead and visit the website um, um, things are broken down on the website to the left here. You can see under dog training, cat training, pet care, pet health, uh, supplies, all kinds of things. So I hope that you will uh, find my website to be, be very useful. And if you have a new puppy, <laughs> you need to go to the website and go to puppy training, either here on the website or else here on my YouTube channel. I have a puppy training playlist where I talk about all kinds of things for puppies. You might also want to go under the pet care category either on the website or on the YouTube channel and there will be a lot of things uh, that pertain to puppies there as well okay now let me tell you a couple of things if you haven't been here before and you're not sure how we do things what I usually do is I use um, this article on my website called how to get ready for a new puppy what to do before bringing your puppy home kind of is my guide for the video so that we can go through things step by step and so that I don't forget anything and also I know lots of people don't want want to just sit and listen to a video. They prefer, they prefer to kind of read along as we're going. So we're going to use this article. I'm going to link this article in the description box of the video uh, for today. So you don't have to read it as we go along. You can just sit and relax while we're discussing things and you'll be able to um, read the article after if you would like to. Also in, in the article and in the description box, I'm going to give you this, uh, which is a link to go ahead and get a printable checklist for everything we're talking about today. Okay, so I hope that that helps you to just be able to relax and enjoy. Like I say, it's going to be a little bit of a longer video. So don't worry about uh, getting a pen or writing things down. I'm going to give you the link to get a printable version of a list of everything we're talking about today. And anything that I give you in today's video, I'm going to give you a lot of resources. I'll give you the links in the description box. Okay, so again, let's just relax and get into it. Um, checklist for a new puppy. You know, if you're bringing home a new puppy, chances are you're going to be bringing them home between six and eight weeks old. That's typical. Uh, up until then, the puppy is used to being with his mother, with its, uh, you know, other puppies in the litter. They're beginning now to have like a sense of sight, a sense of smell. Um, they're starting to kind of make their way out in the world and they're getting social skills. And they're ready at that age to venture out into the world, but they really do need to be cared for. They need somebody, specifically you and your family, who are going to properly care for the puppy and protect them as well. It's not much unlike bringing a new baby home. Pretty much everything that you need to do to prepare for a new puppy are things you would need to prepare for a new baby. You're bringing, you know, in essence, another family member into the household and you've got to make sure you take care of a baby, <laughs> whether it's a baby puppy or a baby person. So my first tip is going to be to go ahead and puppy proof the house. And, you know, I just want to make sure people do this. I think people think in terms of electrical cords and stuff, and that's absolutely correct. But you should actually get down on all fours on your floor and walk around your house on your knees because that's going to give you the uh, view of what is within the puppy's view and what is within the puppy's reach. Um, as you know, puppies like to put everything in their mouths, everything in their mouths, everything in their mouths, just 
just like a baby. So you have to make sure that there's nothing down at ground level where that puppy is going to be able to see and reach things that he shouldn't have in his mouth. Um, you don't want the puppy to get a hold of things that belong to you to chew and destroy. But more importantly, you don't want it, the puppy to get a hold of anything that he's either going to choke on, he's going to be electrocuted by, or he's going to hurt himself on or poison himself with, okay, if he's ingesting something that he shouldn't. Um, just to give you a silly, well, it's not a silly example, but um, I was, I won't tell you the whole long story, but I know of a little Jack Russell Terrier that swallowed an eraser. You know, one of those like orange erasers that are about this big. The dog swallowed the eraser and had to have surgery to have the eraser removed from its stomach. Okay, so not only would that have been an expensive surgery, but that puppy could have died from that. Um, you know, it was an expensive surgery. It was tearing upside just because the dog swallowed an eraser. So, you know, um, I had a little uh, miniature dachshund. If you've been here before, you've heard me talk about her. Her name is Taz. The first day I got her, she wasn't even a puppy. She was actually a senior dog uh, by the time I adopted her. But she ate two of those little orange um, spongy earplugs. You know what I mean? And the way I discovered she had eaten them is she pooped them out in the backyard. They were orange. Like I said, what's that orange thing in the grass? I go, she had, she had swallowed these two little foam earplugs and she had pooped them out in the yard. Well, you know, that's all fine. The dog didn't get hurt. But what if that would have been something worse? You know, what if, you know, that could have been, so I'm just saying, that was an adult dog. That was a senior dog that just came across those earplugs. I'm guessing that they had fallen like off my headboard because I used them at night. They were probably under the bed. And she ate them. So I'm just saying, you literally have to get down on your hands and knees and look around. Look under the bed. Look under the furniture. Anywhere where your puppy's going to be able to see things. This is another important point that some people don't realize. You should also make sure things like bookshelves and televisions are secure so they won't topple over. Um, puppies have actually been killed by things falling over. The TV is too heavy on the shelf and falls over. An entire dresser will fall over. This also happens to young children where pieces of furniture will actually topple over and, and literally crush the, the child or the puppy. So make sure your furniture is, is secure so nothing's going to fall on the puppy. Also, make sure that your trash cans are secure so that your puppy cannot get into the garbage. I'm going to give you two links. I mentioned them here in the article. One is my article with a video called Foods That Are Poisonous for Dogs. That comes with a printable uh, list of foods that are poisonous for, for dogs and cats, actually. And I'm also going to give you a link to my article that includes a video, or you can um, watch the video up here on YouTube, Keeping Your Dog Out of the Garbage. Now, this is very important for not just because of the mess that if your puppy rips into the garbage, he makes a big mess, but more importantly, because of the foods that are poisonous for dogs. For example, uh, caffeine is poisonous for dogs. So you got coffee grounds in your kitchen garbage can every day. Your puppy gets into the garbage and just some of those coffee grounds that can be toxic, toxic for your puppy. Okay, there's, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot about it because I talk about many more examples and all things relative to that in my video, how to keep your dog out of the garbage. So again, I'm going to give you the link to go ahead and get the checklist for the foods that are uh, poisonous for dogs and also the help on how to keep your puppy out of the garbage. And you know, that's just something that you want to get solved right from day one with your puppy because you don't want a dog that's always getting into the garbage. You don't want to have to worry about it, you know. Okay, your next um, list of things you need for your new puppies, get food and water bowls. Now, I know this sounds kind of stupid, like, oh, yeah, Deborah, of course, we know we need to get food and water bowls. But you got to be a little bit careful about this. Uh, you know, you need to get, for example, a water bowl that's just little for the puppy. Because if you have a great big dog bowl and your puppy's in there, they can fall into it. They, they tend to put their snouts too far into the um, water bowl. Kittens do the same thing. They'll like dunk themselves. And you know, it only takes a drop or two of water for an animal, especially a small one, to drown, to literally drown. So you want to make sure that it's a little puppy water bowl. So it's not this great big bowl of water he's going to be able to dunk his face or his head in. So that's kind of important until they start to learn. Also, you don't want a great big bowl because the puppy will spill it. Okay, so if you just have a little water bowl like this and the puppy spills it, it's only a little bit of water. If you have a great big bowl and the puppy spills it, you got a lake on your kitchen floor. So it's kind of important to, to pick just little puppy bowls. 
Um, the other thing is that uh, you want to make sure that you have um, one of those non-slip ones. I'm going to show you one right now. One of those non-slip ones because your puppy is just learning how to drink from the bowl. They're playful. Everything's a, a screw around. They're going to be pushing it around, blah, blah, blah. If you get one of the skid-proof ones, it's going to be better. Um, you're also going to want ones that can be safely cleaned in the dishwasher but are not easily broken. Again, you know, your puppy is going to be pushing it around you know, acting like a dork, you know, with his, with his dish, with everything, everything's a big playtime to a puppy. So, uh, hard plastic is probably a, a better bet. Um, and I'm just going to show you, I'm giving you the link here. I'll give it to you in the description box to find some, uh, selection of puppy food bowls. And I'm giving you the link specifically to go for the ones for puppies. This is the one I like right here. Um, it's only $12.98. Now you see this, it's this plastic thing that is a no skid. See, it's no skid silicone mat. So that like sticks to your kitchen floor. So it'll stay in place. So the puppy's not pushing his food dishes all around and dumping the food and dumping the water. And as you can see, if you can see my cursor here, these little um, aluminum dishes come out and they're dishwasher safe. You see, so this thing just sticks to your kitchen floor. And then this is an appropriate size of food and water for a puppy. And then there's bigger ones here. As you can see, as your dog gets older, you can graduate to bigger bowls and all these food, food, uh, feeding stations and so forth. But this is what I'm talking about. Uh, dishes that are appropriate size for the puppy and that you're not going to have the mess all over the kitchen. Okay. And again, I'm giving you the links for that. Also, you might want to consider giving uh, getting a crate. Now, let's stay on crate training just for a minute because it's important. You don't have to crate train your puppy, um, but it can be very useful if you do, and it can be very comforting for your puppy if he has a crate. If he has a crate to call his own, especially a crate to go into when you're not at home so he feels secure, a crate to sleep in at night again so he's not crying all night so he feels secure. Now, here's, here's what I want to talk about here. First of all, I'm going to give you a link to Amazon for a nice selection of dog crates, okay? Now, I'm also going to talk about Doggy Dan. If you've been here before, you have heard me talk about Doggy Dan. He is the owner of the dog training website called The Online Dog Trainer. He is a professional dog trainer and a behavioral specialist. Now, I'm going to talk a bit more in this video about the puppy training that Doggy Dan has available. I'm going to give you links to it. But within this article, if you go to my article, you're going to see a video from Doggy Dan about crate training your puppy. It's a really cute video. It's worth watching. This is his little uh, dog Moses and he does a training program with Moses on his website. Now I'm giving you the link here. I'll give it to you in the description box for Doggy Dan's free full tutorial about crate training. As a matter of fact, I'll show it to you right now. I'm going to give you this link. This is important. Um, don't just go on don't just go on Google and figure out how to do crate training. Get Go here. Okay, go here because it's free. He's a professional dog trainer. This is a step-by-step -step article telling you how to crate train your puppy. Um, tips and tools for crate training a new puppy. This is Doggy Dan's website. This is Doggy Dan, by the way. This is his website, the online dog trainer. I give you the link to the crate training. He goes through step by step. He also gives you a crate training cheat sheet that you can download and print. And that, then also within Doggy Dan's post is his video where he's crate training his puppy Moses. So again, look at he. It's a full tutorial. Okay, it is a full tutorial from Doggy Dan. So I'm giving you the link to that. So I really strongly suggest that you go ahead and get some help with crate training. Purchase a crate. But do the crate training first because Doggy Dan will talk to you about like what size to crate to get and stuff like that. So go ahead and do that free Doggy Dan crate training and then you'll know you'll know what you're doing there. OK, uh, you might consider getting a baby gate or two or three uh, like this. You know, when your puppy is brand new at home. Not only is it a big wide world for your puppy that might be a little intimidating for the puppy, it might cause some anxiety for the puppy, especially if you have a large house, but it's also for you. It's going to be easier for you to supervise the puppy and it's going to be easier for you to train the puppy if you can keep them to a more con um, confined area. Also, if there's areas of your home where you don't want the puppy to be, maybe it's not safe for the puppy. Maybe you don't want the puppy in your kids' rooms. Maybe they have a bunch of toys all over their floor. If 
you have small kids and you don't want the puppy going in there and ruining their toys or choking on their toys. So you might consider getting a baby gate or like I say, two or three uh, to go ahead and block off some rooms. And it won't be forever. It's just while your puppy is young, while you're training him and so forth and until he gets a little bit older. And again, I'm going to give you uh, a link to get some um, baby gates on Amazon. Also, you're going to want toys for your puppy. Um, I have a, you know, I'll try to remember to link it for you guys. I have a um, video on my uh, YouTube channel and an article on my website called How to Get Puppies to Quit Biting. <laughs> It's going to be one of your biggest problems, and so I really suggest that you get that video. But in that video, we talk about chew toys like this, where instead of having the puppy biting you all the time, you continuously, you're giving him his chew toy, giving him his chew toy. So having chew toys for your puppy is a necessity. Even if you get that puppy no other toy, you're going to want a chew bone of some sort because the puppy is going to be biting you and absolutely everything. So again, I'm going to actually make a note for myself right now so I don't forget Um biting video. I got to remember to link that video for you um, in the in the description box. Maybe at the end of the video, I'll give you a link to it because that's an important one because it's a big nuisance, uh, obviously, when your puppy is biting all the time. But, you know, you've got to specifically um, get toys that are appropriate for puppies. I'm going to show you some right now. I'm giving you the link to... Um, Amazon for a group of puppy toys that I just think is good. And that's this one here. Now this one is $21.99. You get six toys. And the reason that I like this one is it has everything the puppy needs and no more than the puppy needs. Okay, your puppy does not need a thousand toys. They don't need a whole bunch of things all over the house. They only need a few things. And this one I like. Now, and plus I wanted to use this as an example to give you some more advice about this for the safety of your puppy. You should be giving your puppy toys that are safe for puppies. For example, this kit comes with this little ball. Well, that ball, as you can see, is, a, is an appropriate size for a puppy's mouth. But if you're going to give the puppy a ball, you've got to make sure that it's that it's small enough that the puppy can fit it in his mouth, but not so small that the puppy could swallow it, okay? So you want to make sure that you have an appropriate puppy size ball, if you want to give a ball. Um, and again, shoe toys. This one has this great nylon bone. This is a teething bone. This is the bone right here that you're going to be able to use to train your puppy not to bite. Again, if you watch that video, you're going to wish you had this or that other package of toys that I showed you. I'll give you the link to that. Um, this this is just another chew toy. And these two are, uh, you know, tug of war toys. This one has a handle that you can hold on to. This is a smaller one. I wanted to make two points about the tug of war toys. One is please don't jerk your dog's head all around. You think the dog likes it. The dog is tolerating it. Okay. When you're jerking your dog's head all around and you're dragging him around the house by his tug of war bone, you know, if you've got a hundred pound pit bull, okay, fine. You know, wrestle with the dog. But if you've got a small dog, if you've got a puppy, if you've got a chihuahua, if you've got a wiener dog, if you've got a small dog, you know, they have teeth, they have a neck, they have a spine. Do you know what I mean? Please don't whip your puppy around on these tug of war um, type toys. In other words, if you wouldn't want your teeth pulled like that, and if you wouldn't want your neck ripped around like that, then don't do it. And please teach your children not to do that with the puppy. Now, puppies and dogs, they do like to wrestle with it. They do like to get rough. They do like to fight you for it, but just don't be so rough please, because you don't want to end up with an injury for the dog and you don't want to end up with a vet bill because you were too rough with the dog. You don't want to end up with dental you know, issues with the dog. So I'm just giving that as kind of just a precaution about these toys. The other point I wanted to make about the tug of war toys is the little tug of war toys. They're great for building a puppy's confidence. Now, what I would suggest is, especially if you have an anxious puppy, if you have, I hate to pick on chihuahuas, but chihuahuas do tend to be one of the more nervous breeds. Um, miniature dachshunds uh, tend to be more of a nervous breed. You know, some some dogs are just kind of a nervous sort of dog, and especially if your puppy is that, you need to help them build their confidence. And the way that you do this, you have the little tug of war toy, and you play tug of war, but sometimes let them win. 
oh, they got it from you. Do you know what I mean? You pull on it, let them, let them win because it will help to build their confidence. And it's just really, really important, especially if you have an, or a nervous or an anxious dog. So enough about the toys. But again, I'm going to give you the link here. You're going to be able to find these. You're going to be able to pick out some puppy toys. But again, this is just a nice collection of all you need. You don't need any more than that. And you don't even need this many. Oh, and then of course, the little stuffy toy. You know, dogs, uh, especially if this puppy has come from a litter, they're used to snuggling. You know, they're used to snuggling with their litter mates. And so it's nice to give a puppy a small stuffed animal. But again, you want to make sure it's puppy proof. You don't want buttons for eyes, for example, that the puppy's going to chew off that button and swallow it and choke on it. You see, this one is safe for puppies. So I do recommend some sort of little, um, you know, stuffed toy for your puppy. This is so cute, isn't it? <laughs> All this stuff, it's just like so cute. All right, get some puppy training skills. Now, I've already started talking with you about this a little bit, but let's talk about it a little bit more. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're bringing home a new puppy is they don't realize what it's going to take to train that puppy. They, they think they know, or maybe they know a couple of things, but, you know, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work to train a puppy and to train a puppy correctly. And unfortunately, it's very heartbreaking when um, either somebody returns the puppy to the pet store or drops them off at the SPCA or worse, the puppy is abused, yelled at, hit, or the dog ends up uh, living outside in a dog house because people didn't know how to do training with the puppy. So in my mind, um, obviously your puppy's safety is first, but I say a very close second is training, that you need to train your puppy, not only so that they're not destroying your house and so that they're not bugging the crap out of you all the time, but for their safety, not only while they're a puppy, but for the rest of their life, uh, they need to be a well trained, well-behaved dog. Uh, so it's just really, really important. I've already mentioned Doggy Dan, the online dog trainer. Let me sit here for a couple of minutes. Let's talk about this for a little bit. First of all, I'm giving you the link to um, Doggy Dan's Perfect Puppy Program. It's a complete puppy program. It's step-by-step. -step. Doggy Dan's website is made up of videos where you actually get to watch Doggy Dan train pets. Okay. So you actually get to watch them. That uh, beagle that I showed you named Moses on um, Doggy Dan's uh, puppy training portion of his website, he has a puppy training program called Project Moses. And it's where he, you actually see him in the video. He goes to this local SPCA and he adopts Moses when Moses is an eight week old little beagle puppy. And then he films his training Moses all through his life up until a year old and he covers everything. That's why Moses ended up in the crate training video. Okay. Because he trained, he videotaped the whole thing. So if you've got a brand new puppy, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to train your puppy is to actually watch a professional dog trainer train a puppy. And so I'm going to give you the link to the perfect puppy program. It's going to take you to the puppy section of doggy Dan's website. You can go on there if you want specifically uh, search for project Moses. If you don't just see it um, and you're going to be able to get that. I think it's very important. Now, while I'm here, let's talk about the pricing for that. Doggy Dan, get, well, first of all, a couple of the trainings that I'm giving you in today's video are free. That crate training tutorial is free and I'm just about to give you information about getting your kids involved in dog training and those um, puppy training uh, courses are free. Okay, so you can get a lot of a, actually a ton of free training um, in, in dog, uh, Doggy Dan's blogs all about puppy training. But for the programs themselves where you really get into it and you go through the puppy training programs, he gives a $1 of uh, trial for three days. So if you go in, you sign up for $1, you can have three whole days and it's not a limited access. You get access to the entire website. So as many videos as you want to watch, if you want to watch a pup, um, a puppy's biting training, if you want to watch crate training, if you want to watch um, potty training, oh boy, look on my YouTube channel, potty training videos, You you that, obviously, you're, you're just going to need potty training, it's probably the most important, um, potty training and biting, I think are the two most important, but for three whole days for a dollar, you can go in and you can watch as many of those videos as you want to. Now, uh, he has a membership that is $37 a month. So if you sign up for a whole month, it's $37. 
And then it's $37 a month thereafter, and you can stay in for as long as you want. You can cancel and get out at any time, or you can stay as long as you want. I do recommend if you have a new puppy that you get either the six-month or the year um, package with Doggy Dan because it's going to save you money for per month. If you get six months at a time, it's cheaper per month. And if you get 12 months at a time, it's, you know, it's cheaper. It ends up saving you money. And if you have a brand new puppy, I think you're going to want at least the six months because when you think about it, you've got to teach potty training. You've got to teach about biting. You've got to teach about crate training. I I suggest that you do uh, great training. You've got to teach that puppy how to walk on a leash. You have to teach that puppy how to come to you uh, when they're called. You've got to teach recall. Uh, you've got to teach about barking. You've got to teach about everything. And so I think the six-month membership uh, for Doggy Dan is a really good decision for a puppy owner because you're going to get the step-by-step -step training that you need. And you're going to, for that investment in that six months where you and your family, and I would suggest getting the kids involved and watching those videos with you and you all do it together as a family, it's going to be a the best investment that you can make. Um, not only are you teaching your kids how to handle a dog for the rest of their lives, which I think is a great gift you can give to your children when you teach them how to treat animals. Um, and if they they want to be a dog owner for the rest of their life. They know what they're doing, right? I just think it's a really good investment. So I'll move on. Again, get the kids involved. I'm going to recommend two different things here. First, there is a training. I'm going to give you a link. This is free. I'll show it to you from Doggy Dan, where he uh, does a whole uh, tutorial about getting your kids involved with dog tra while you're training your dog at home. It's a lengthy tutorial. He talks about every step of it, um, all of you getting together on the same page, teaching your kids, all these sorts of things. It's a really, really, really good tutorial. I'm giving you the link to it. That tutorial is free. I also want want to mention a um, website called The Family Dog. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get any kind of, uh, you know, commissions or anything for referring them, but I want to tell you about them because it's specifically for dog training for kids and they make it fun. Like they have a lot of videos, they do songs, they do all this stuff. It's really cute. I want to say their program is $199 or at least it was the last time I checked. So it's a bit pricier, but I do want to mention it because if this is important for you and if, especially if if you have several kids, that might be something you want to consider. But you can also get the free training from Doggy Dan about how to get your kids involved. And then, like I say, if you get the puppy program from Doggy Dan, have the kids watch the videos with you so you're learning as a family. Okay, so there's a couple of options for getting your kids involved. All right, now I'll get off the whole training thing, okay? It was a really important piece, and I wanted to give you those resources uh, for training because it's, it's very important for you and your sanity <laughs> to be able to have a well-behaved puppy. A couple of things you may not have thought of is getting pet health insurance. I'm going to give you uh, my two recommendations for pet insurance companies are Healthy Paws and Pet Plan. I'm giving you the links in the description box for those. You can get a free quote. I can tell you that the younger your dog is, the cheaper your pet insurance is, just like with people. The older we get, the more expensive it is for us to have health insurance. Uh, same with your puppy. I do suggest getting uh, pet health insurance and getting it while your puppy is young for two reasons. One, the younger they are, the cheaper your premium. Number two, you don't want to wait and have something happen to your puppy or have your pet puppy get sick and then try to get the policy because it's just like with people, um, you'll be able to get a pet insurance policy, but the uh, company is not going to cover a pre-existing illness or an accident that's already happened, okay? You can't wait for the puppy to get sick and then you go get insurance. The puppy's already been diagnosed. The, the insurance isn't going to cover it. Same with you don't want to uh, wait until your puppy breaks a leg or something and then you go get insurance again. They're not going to cover that. So I do suggest it's one of the things that you should have in your budget for your puppy. Now, I know Pet Plan has... Um, pet insurance plans starting at $10 a month. So, you know, if nothing else, get the bare minimum, get yourself some coverage. Now, if you want to talk about this more, I have a couple of things. Um, under the pet health playlist on my um, 
YouTube channel, you'll find a video called Pet Health Insurance, Everything You Need to Know, and that has tons of uh, details about this. I'm also going to give you a link in this description of this video call for a video, uh, an article I did with a video called Is Pet Insurance Worth It for Dogs? Um, if you're on the fence about this, I really, really recommend that you watch it. There's a lot of things that you probably aren't thinking of that you probably don't realize. Uh, my recommendation is yes, uh, you should get pet health insurance and you should get it while your puppy is brand new because you're going to save money money on the, the premiums over the life of the policy. I'm also going to give you a link um, in this description box for an article that I have on my website. Again, it has a video and it is how to get help with vet bills. Okay, you should definitely check into that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to give you the link to this. Um, it talks about pet medical bills. It has a nice video in it. If nothing else, you need to know about care credit. I'm, I'm not going to go into it here, but please go into this article. I'll give you the link. Find out about it. You're going to wish uh, that you had had this. Uh, this also gives you a checklist for 12 questions you should ask before buying pet insurance. Um, it gives you some videos, the reviews of these um pet insurance companies, you know, so all the resources are available to you uh, right here on this YouTube channel and definitely on my website. I'll link as many things as I possibly can for you so that you can make good decisions about all these things, you know, about your pet supplies, about your crate, whether or not you want a crate train, about what kind of training you're going to do, um, about pet health insurance. I'm going to give you as much as I possibly can. Um, but no matter how many decisions you have to make and how confusing and maybe even a little scary it can be, just enjoy your puppy. I think that I say in my article, I personally feel that dogs are a precious, priceless gift from God. That's the way that I see them. They are all love. Uh, I have had dogs since I was a young child and the the love and uh, companionship and enjoyment and laughter that they have brought me my whole life is priceless. And because of all that they have to give us, I think we owe it to ourselves to educate ourselves so that we know how to provide the best life for them that we can. Okay. Now, a couple of things before we leave. Uh, first off, like I said, I'm not going to list everything because I've already told you everything we talked about. I'm going to give you a link in the description box. I'm also going to give you a link in the description box to go ahead and sign up for my dog lovers email list. As a new puppy owner, you probably won't want to go on that because uh, once you're signed up for the dog lovers email list, every week or so you'll get an email from peoplelovinganimals.com and it will be all about dogs, uh, pet uh, care, health, training, everything having to do with dogs. And as a new puppy owner, I think you'll find that to be very valuable, but you can unsubscribe from that list at any time. Also, if you don't know this, if you haven't been here before, you don't know that I donate to animal charities. I am an affiliate marketer. It's how I do people loving animals.com as my job. And, um, I make a small commission on not all, but some of the products and services that I recommend in my videos and also on my website. For example, I am uh, an affiliate for Amazon. So if you use the links that I'm giving you to purchase various things on Amazon, I will get a small commission. I am an affiliate for Doggy Dan. Um, I do get a commission if you buy his program. Um, the pet health insurance companies, I choose. Now, what I do is I choose, I shop around for things like dog training, uh, cat training, pet health insurance, um, pet supplies, all that sort of thing. And then whatever I decide on that I think is the best thing that I want to recommend on my website, I go and apply to be an affiliate for that product or service. And then I use that on my website. So that is true of Doggy Dan. That's also true of these two particular health insurance companies. I will get a small commission if you use my links. I donate 10% of all of those commissions to animal charities. If you go to the homepage of my website, people love animals.com, you'll be able to see a list of the animal charities that I donate to. For that reason, I'm going to ask you to please like this video. If you've gotten any value about um, from it whatsoever, it'll help promote the YouTube channel. There's um, 
notes in the description of ways that you can donate to support peoplelovinganimals.com. And another way that you can support peoplelovinganimals.com and this YouTube channel is just to share these videos, put them on social media, share them with your friends and family who have dogs and cats. And uh, like I said, every purchase, 10% uh, of the commissions go to help animals. Again, I'm going to send you a print. Um, I'm going to give you the link to um, get a printable list of what we went over in today's video. So I hope um, I hope that this video has been helpful. I thank you so much for joining me. By the way, there's a bird somewhere around me. If you can see that, if you find the bird, make a little comment um, just for fun. Make a comment that uh, you tell me where you see the little bird in this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on your new puppy. I hope you have years and years and years of joyful, joyful time with your new dog. And I hope that I have helped at least in some small way for your puppy's life to be a happier one and for you to be happy with your new puppy. If you have any questions, any further suggestions, please feel free to comment. Again, thanks so much for watching the video. My name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.